it took our friends down in Brazil to think of this one, a fishing school. We hardly believed it ourselves till we saw this picture. But that's just what it is, a school to teach youngsters how to be good fishermen. A modern church built in early colonial style is the center of a fine group of modern school buildings. The boys start every day of their lives by going to church, which is more than can be said of some fishermen we know. And we feel pretty sure that one of the things these lads give thanks for is that they're not in an ordinary school. Each boy probably says to himself every day the Portuguese equivalent of, gee whiz, everybody loves to go fishing, and here I am in a place where I can go fishing every day. If you're a Brazilian boy, you don't go to this school just because you have the idea that you'd like to. The first thing a boy has to make sure of is that he's born the son of a fisherman. Yes, all the students are sons of fishermen. And thus Brazil is doing a lot to maintain the standards and traditions of an ancient and honorable calling. The boys are chosen by the governors of the various states. And they come from many places all along Brazil's extremely long coastline. gaze upon this extraordinary scene, every boy doing his own wash, the first thing we think of is that we never saw anything quite like this in any other school. The idea is that it helps to teach them self-reliance and independence. However, there isn't much danger of any of them becoming professional laundrymen. They do it, but they're not perfectionists. They're much better at fishing. Marambaia Fishing School. It's at the end of a great peninsula about 50 miles south of Rio de Janeiro and faces on the Bay of Ilha Grande, a spot chosen because in the surrounding waters fish are plentiful. The whole enterprise is one of the favorite projects of President Vargas and certainly is an example of the vigorous progressiveness of our great South American neighbor and ally. The boys learn, besides a lot of other things, semaphore signaling marine rules and regulations, and the handling of small boats. And from hard-bitten old fishermen, to whom a sailing craft is the noblest work of man, they learn all about rigging and knots and canvas, what to do with them and what not to do. As service in the armed forces is compulsory in Brazil, these lads will do all right for themselves in the Navy later on. Of course, in boat building, too, learning as much about a boat's structure as a good pilot ought to know about his plane. And it's all fun. What boy anywhere wouldn't love this kind of school? And they learn how to make these important tools of their trade next. One of the first lessons in the real tricks of the trade, fishing with a net close to shore, a method that works a good deal better along this coast, where marine life is abundant, than it would along many of the shores we know up here in the north. never know what's coming in in that net. Of course, suspense is always one of the feelings surging through the heart of any fisherman. Let's just wait and see what they've got. Sometimes, in real commercial fishing, the haul by this method is big. A stingray. He picks it up just so. For the fish, which has a very poisonous sting, can do a lot of bodily damage to anyone who doesn't know just how to grasp the creature. 
and the sea turtle, destined to justify his existence on Earth by becoming beautiful soup. A large number of unsuspecting, carefree, hitherto unmolested sardines are right over there. If the sardines were thinking creatures, they would feel a good deal of self-importance, for they contribute in a large way to Brazil's tanning industry. This netting of sardines is one of the really important things the boys have to learn. We're watching real sardine fishing. Some of the boys are aboard, as we'll see presently, learning all about it. When the fishermen arrive at the spot where the school of fish has been sighted, the trick is to get the net down quickly and in a complete circle. Otherwise, the sardines will go away from there in a hurry. This turns out to be a perfect job. In the net are literally tons of agitated sardines, all having the surprise of their young lives. Boys from the school, out here to learn this part of their trade, help to haul in the big net. The sardines must be brought aboard in small nets, because the weight of all those fish would break the big net if it were hauled in all at one time, and nets are expensive. As soon as the fish are all aboard, they are basketed and hustled back to port and into the cannery the same day. A catch as big as this is valuable, and the boys are taught the ways of making sure of such haul, and then how to handle the big catches quickly in order to protect their market value. with them to the cannery. In the cannery, the sardines receive so much careful individual attention that they would all feel pretty flattered if they were in any position to know about it. Some of the boys will later on become specialists in the cannery industry. So all of them are given the training that will make them experts. are under daily inspection and repair. This naturally isn't as much fun as fishing, but every boy has to acquire the necessary patience and painstaking care. They all become expert net repairers. The boats are in pretty constant need of overhauling and repair too. And who does all that work? The boys. Under careful instruction, they learn all about replacing defective timbers, caulking leaks, scraping off barnacles, and all the other useful knacks of keeping the boats absolutely shipshape. And now you can have three guesses as to what the boys do on their days off, their holidays. That's right, they go fishing. As we said before, every boy likes to go fishing. For these budding professionals, fishing from a pier with bamboo poles is as much fun as it is for anybody. And if you ask them, está picando, which is the Portuguese for having any luck, they would say, assim, assim, which is the Portuguese for, yeah, pretty good. The boys receive a certain amount of ordinary classroom schooling. And in addition, they have a good deal of schoolroom instruction in the lore of fish and how to catch them. It is in the classroom that they receive their introduction to Mr. Elasmobranch Salakian, 
In other words, the shark, which has become important in Brazilian fisheries as a source of food and of a high vitamin content oil. The boys have to know all there is to know about Elasmobranch salakian. And now they're ready to meet Mr. E.S. face to face, which is a pretty exciting business. The boys have a lot of lines with baited hooks anchored out here in the places where they've learned the sharks like to do their own prowling and fishing. The boys come out here every day. Shark fishing just for the fun of it. No, Elasmobranch salakian, if not exactly beautiful, is of considerable commercial value. Loaded to the gunnels with more sharks than most of us have ever seen gathered together in one place. And as soon as the boat reaches shore, the catch is unloaded and taken to the factory. their last appearance as anything resembling sharks. The interesting thing about them now is that each one is in full and undisputed possession of a liver and also of a lot of meat which is, believe it or not, perfectly edible food. From the livers is extracted an oil which contains a valuable vitamin. One notable function claimed for this vitamin is that it improves the nighttime vision of airplane pilots. Much of the oil is bottled and shipped to the United States. The shark meat is cut into small pieces, well salted, and given a thorough drying in the sun. It has taken the world some time to discover it, but shark meat is good food. and tastes a good deal like codfish. Such is Marambaya, the unique school for fishermen, where Brazil is setting all the rest of us a fine example. Brazil is sure of a continuous supply of experts in a calling vital to the country's economy and food supply. And meantime, what a good time those boys do have. 